I had a feeling something was wrong with my wife Caroline. After 12 years together, 10 married, I sensed a change in her. Nothing major, but enough for a husband who knew her well. We were an ordinary Scandinavian family, two kids, a seven-year-old boy and five-year-old girl. We owned a house near the county capital and both worked full-time, Caroline at City Hall and me at a small consulting firm. We met in an evening Excel class and married two years later. Our marriage had ups and downs like any couple, but no big problems. At least that's what I thought. The first signs came a month after our 10th anniversary. Caroline seemed less interested in sex. She didn't deny me outright, but quick caresses often replaced lovemaking. She also started spending more on clothes and picking at me for no good reason. Caroline spent at least two nights a week with friends aerobics, night classes, bowling, badminton. Just innocent fun. A couple times a year she joined them at a bar or restaurant to celebrate a birthday or promotion, but no more than that. I studied her nights out, searching for any new or strange patterns, but found none. My coworker Eric noticed my marital woes. He said it was better to uncover the truth than walk around miserable. I admitted a private I could probably find answers, but I couldn't afford one. Our small town had no listings, and surveilling Caroline would cost too much regardless. Still, I promised Eric I would get to the bottom of things with Caroline, one way or another. I'm glad you're finding these editing examples helpful. Here are some edits for another snippet. After testing the email service Sunday morning, I sent Caroline this message at work Monday. Dear Mrs. Ekman, I'm disappointed to have evidence of your infidelity. Your husband has my sympathy and your lover my envy for his pleasures with a gorgeous woman like you. I'm tempted to inform your husband. But I have a better offer. I want a lovely time with you during my next business trip, sponsored by you. Meet me alone at the Plaza Cafe today. 2.30 to 3 p.m. with 600 euro cash in an envelope. My friend will greet you saying, aren't you Lars' sister? You must reply, no, I'm his wife, and hand over the envelope. Thank you for your kind cooperation. Your true friend's 600 euros was too little for serious blackmail, but enough for Caroline to discreetly withdraw. I suggested Eric and I take our 3 p.m. coffee break there arriving early. To my feigned shock, Caroline sat alone. My real shock came when I spotted Martin, her friend's husband, at another table. Let me know if you would like me to continue polishing this story. I focused on tightening up wordy sections and vividly capturing emotions and mood. At home, I logged into our bank account. 600 euros had been withdrawn and redeposited that day enough proof for now. I grabbed divorce forms from the courthouse during lunch. When Caroline arrived home, she lashed out furious. You acted like an idiot at the cafe. I'll explain everything if you just listen. I refused to hear her excuses. Read the divorce papers and sign them. We split assets 50 50 so you won't get a better deal, even with a lawyer. She was livid, signing without reading. It'll be a relief to have a real man, not a lowlife like you, she shouted. And so my marriage ended, Caroline storming off as I stared blankly. Later, a sobbing Cecilia called, saying Martin confessed to an affair with Caroline. He now wept for forgiveness while she debated their future. I said Caroline and I had already signed divorce papers. One thing was certain if Caroline wanted Martin, she was in for disappointment. But that wasn't my place to tell. Strange events followed. Arriving home the next day, Caroline surprised me, saying, Dear Lars, I'm sorry for my angry outburst yesterday. I didn't mean those stupid things I said. Please forgive me. You're my one true love, no more hard feelings. We must solve problems like adults. Tear up those divorce papers we signed in haste, and I promise to be a better, more loving wife. I'll explain everything about the cafe. I stared her in the eyes. 
the divorce papers are filed. I know of your affair with Martin Cecilia told me his confession. That's why our marriage has been loveless lately. I suspected your deception, but had no hard proof until Martin admitted cheating. I'm sorry, but I'll never understand how you could prefer that bastard over me. I can't forget how you've humiliated me with your love for him. Cecilia will deal with that whiny scumbag now. If you love that spineless creep, you'll have to support him and his expensive habits yourself. Caroline sobbed. I made a terrible mistake. How could I be so stupid as to fall for that worm scam? I'd rather be alone forever than with him. About two months after filing for divorce, something very unexpected happened. One Saturday, Caroline asked if I could keep an important financial secret. I promised. She confessed. You may have heard someone in town won the lottery jackpot. It was me three million dollars. We're still married, so I'm asking if you'll claim half. Congratulations, I said, but I want nothing from you. Only set up funds for the kids' future education, weddings, etc. She asked again if I was sure I wouldn't demand money. I replied, when we were together, all I needed was your love. But I know when Martin hears of your windfall, he'll be begging your forgiveness to get his hands on it. He'll never know though, as I promise to stay silent. Despite your broken vows, I am a man of my word. Nothing more was said of it. But the following Thursday and Friday Caroline was out of town. After dinner, as we sat comfortably on the sofa, Caroline said, I'm sorry I ruined our happy family by deceiving you, the best man I've known. I'll never understand how I fell for Martin's advances. I regret it deeply and have cried many sleepless nights over my stupidity. I know money can't buy your forgiveness, but the courts would have an offender compensate their victim for pain caused. Since no court cares what I did, I sentence myself the lottery money remaining after the kids' funds will go to you for the hurt I've caused. I can't undo my actions, but did what I would have before Martin fooled me. Please don't feel you owe me anything in return. I had no conditions except a faint hope I did the right thing. She gave me the bank receipts. I sat silent a while before saying, My God, what have you done? I can't accept this money, I'll return it to you. But Caroline refused any repayment, saying the lawyers ensured no takebacks. She hadn't tried to buy my love, only provide compensation. Though shocked, I began to see her love was real. Caroline was an intelligent, beautiful woman, mother of my children. I suspected she still loved me. Could I find a better partner? Forgive her? I didn't know, but decided to try. We skipped the divorce. Our relationship healed, and we were a happy family again. The children made us promise never to split up. Oddly, I hardly cared about the details of Caroline's affair anymore. Though she'd given me all her money, I never felt she'd bought me back she asked nothing in return, only hoping she'd done right. Truthfully, I missed her so much I likely would have tried reconciling even without the money. Her love was unconditional. One thing was certain the past was behind us. We focused on the future, treasuring what we had. Our renewed bond grew stronger with time. Caroline was my beloved wife once more.